welcome to On The Curbs, I'm your host Team Albers Daily and this week I've got something a little bit different for you all as I talk to someone from the world of IndyCar. Dalton Kellett is racing in his first full season of IndyCar this year after several appearances in the 2020 season. We caught up recently to chat about how he went from racing around a frozen lake in Canada as a child to making it onto the IndyCar grid this year. What the most challenging kind of tracks are, his love for space and much more. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Hey Dalton, thanks for being here today. First of all, how are you? Good, yourself. Thanks for thanks for having me. No worries, my pleasure. So, first question I like to ask everyone who comes on here: What first attracted you to motorsport? Yeah, uh, so my I, I started racing cars when I was about 13 years old, uh, but really, kind of prior to that, um, I, you know, was always kind of in, into cars. I think some, you know, a big part of that influence was my dad. He uh, definitely a car guy. You know, kind of grew up um, as a as a gearhead um, when I was really young, when I was like three years old or so or two. My uh, parents got me a little, it's like a little 60 cc two stroke little Arctic cat, kitty cat, like skidoo thing right so um some friends and i uh who actually they they, they also went on went on to race uh gary and ryan clute um you know we were kind of family friends and uh we would sort of race our little mini mini skidoos around the around the frozen lake at our at our family cottage kind of thing so that was you know like the really young kind of seminal introduction to that stuff but yeah just 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 kind of you know, and it's like a super canadian story right um but <laughs> You know, just kind of always was a gearhead, and uh, you know, had some, so those those guys went on and raced raced carts before I got into it, and was like, oh, that that, that looks super cool. I want to I want to try that and, and give that a shot. So from early teens, got, kind of got into it that way. So as soon as you start doing it in one form, you want to try the next thing up, and just escalates and keeps going, doesn't it? Yeah, pretty much. You know, it's like you start out. So in Canada, uh, it's pretty common to do like four stroke racing at, at the time. Uh, we were using like small. Uh, they were six five Honda, Honda six five like like horsepower like the ones that you little motor that you know a kind of, kind of pull cord motor that you'd use in like a lawnmower or something like that. Like now it's like Briggs and Stratton is is kind of the, the 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 main like entry level sort of engine platform and then progressed to the Rotax stuff two strokes and kind of you know, went up through that to that system and then to open wheel um, in in F sixteen hundred and grade twelve. And then uh, now you're in, if I'm getting my facts correct, your second full season in IndyCar. Um, first, uh, first, so first full season, second, like second season. So like in 2020, it was always going to be kind of a split deal with like I was doing seven races or so and then Kanan was doing most of the ovals. And and so it's the one thing I'm not used to with IndyCar is just being able to switch out all the time if you yeah, want to. It's kind of unique. Yeah. <laughs> So first, first full-time year, but second year in the series, I guess. Well, then based off what you did for, for it last year, what's the most important thing you've learned that can help you improve or has been helping you improve this year? I think the biggest thing with these cars is like, you know, they're, you're rewarded by, you know, how much kind of commitment you can carry off the brakes to the apex and really being on edge there. I think that's like a big factor with, with, with the way that, you know, the, the fire stunt tire, you can really, uh, you can kind of not abuse it. You know, there, there's obviously limit beyond it. Uh, and then with the aero screen, you know, we added that. So that's about 60 pounds, you know, a meter off the ground or so. And that's a big moment that's being applied to the, the outside wheels and, and not just, you know, the lateral load transfer, but like going through the corner, it's kind of, you know, processing around and there's a lot of like inertia there. So, it's really changed how the cars have, how, how the cars feel. I, I had some opportunities to test the IndyCar um, when lights and, you know, they they were a much more kind of nimble sort of feeling car, whereas now you've got this big weight. So just adapting to that has, has been a big learning process. And, you know, it's helpful to have, have Seb, uh, Sebastian Borda on, on with the Foy guys too, as a, as a teammate, having a, a kind of really experienced guy that sort of learned from, um, but, Basically, it's to, to, to boil it down, just kind of dealing with the inherent instability of the car and kind of commitment on entry has is, is, is really been the, the main thing to work on. 
And it's useful having that experienced teammate there to just kind of get to get some extra information and just see, not necessarily make make the same mistakes that he would have made when he was first starting out. You can just avoid those then. Um, which type of track then so far do you think is your favorite type to race on? So we've got like the, the racetrack, the street circuits or the ovals. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I you know, like I said, I started out in carts. Uh, so that was, you know, my sort of introduction to racing. So road course racing was what was what I grew up doing. And, uh, you know, grew up as, as a Formula One fan watching the races with, with my dad and all that. And, uh, you know, like the, the, the Honda Indy, the Toronto Indy, it, it, it is a big IndyCar event in, in Toronto. So that was like a big local race. So seeing, seeing being exposed to that was pretty cool. But, um, yeah, I think for like, so I, I would say I probably feel most, not most comfortable, but like the road course, the road courses are the most natural. I think the street circuits are probably my favorite. Um, but results wise, I think I've, I've done best on, on the ovals. So it's a bit of a, <laughs> you know, it's like maybe I enjoy the street circuits the most, but, um, I probably do, do the best on, 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 on the ovals. So I've always really enjoyed the short ovals, like places like Iowa, uh, I had a chance to race in Milwaukee before we stopped going there. Um, Phoenix, so like those, those short. Do you get satisfaction then from the over ones, or do you prefer this pre in terms of satisfaction when you get a good result there? Because they're obviously a little bit more technical. Perhaps. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I I wouldn't say that the, the the street circuits are more technical than the ovals. Like it's it's kind of its own tactic. It's, it's its technical. own thing. It's like a you know it's like a boxing match versus a versus a, a te- like versus a game of chess. Like the ovals are more. You know, there's a bit more of, I mean, a tactical game being played. And then I think, like, you know, especially with super speedways, like there you're really setting up moves and it's, it's really more tactical than, than anything else. But like on the short ovals, it's like, you know, you really have to drive those. And it's, it's you know, yeah, you're only turning left, but like you're it's dealing not with as easy not. as it looks. <laughs> Definitely not. And, and I, I, I do feel like the, the, the TV angle like doesn't do it just especially like somewhere like Iowa, you know, like the, it doesn't look that fast on TV and like, you know, may, maybe the onboard gives it a better perspective, but like you're really hanging on the whole time and it's like, you really have to drive it. So I think like, I, I don't know, like, like a, 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 a tough race on a, on a short oval, super fun, um, you know, for, for Indy car drivers, like the Indy 500 is our big race. So that's the one that we all want to win. Right. Um, but you know, I, 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 I would say that the satisfaction from a good result is kind of the same, regardless of what track you're on, you know, a race is a race is a, is a race at, at the end of the day. So kind of going off that slightly then, which venue do you think has been the most difficult on the IndyCar calendar so far? Hmm. I would say, you know, usually the season openers at St. Pete, um, which is a street circuit, super tight, super technical, hot, you know, um, Way too pretty quickly. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing with, with, with the aero screen and with the Indy car. You know, we, we don't have power steering. There's no power brake. There's no power brake. So like the physicality of it's pretty pretty intense. That that one's like usually you know pretty challenging for a season opener. But this year we started at Barber Motorsports Park, which is kind of the opposite. It's like super it's super flat, lots of undulation, lots of elevation change, kind of kind of like a Brands Hatch type thing where there's like a lot of big 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 ups and downs. Um, and it's a pretty high grip track. So it's super physical. And I felt like physically starting the race there versus St. Pete, which is, you know, lower grip. So less load in the wheel. Um, that was really challenging. Like that, that third stint by, by the end of the race, like it was, you really had to, you could feel it really had to dig deep and like kind of, you know, some of the high speed corners, it was like, you were almost, you're, you're going in, you're going into the turn, you're like, okay, get ready, uh, turn, like, it was, it was all out, um, so I'd say that was probably, like, the physical, like, the, the, the physically, that was definitely the, the toughest race this year. Away from IndyCar, then, would you ever want to try any other forms of motorsport? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I had the chance to do a few, a few races in IMSA in 2019 with PR1 Motorsports and LMP2, uh, that, that was super fun, you know, I think the endurance racing stuff is, is, is you know, those, those are great formulas, I love having the different classes on, on track, I think that's really exciting, um, I got the chance to race at my favorite track, Motorsport, which is just, just down the road from, uh, from Toronto, so that was, you know, super cool, so that's, that's where I started, that's, it's just, such a cool track, and that, that that's where I actually started out racing F sixteen hundred. So to kind of come back there in, in, a, in a in a big car was 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 pretty sweet. 
you know, I'd love the chance to get to race Daytona, Le Mans kind of thing. Um, I certainly wouldn't say no if someone was like, hey, do you want to do a NASCAR race? Like, why not? I mean, it's oh, yeah. not, 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 not really what I said, what I, what I set out to do, but it would be, you know. Like, so you're, you're not going to, you're not going to look at it twice, are you? You're just going to be no, I mean, an be, opportunity. <laughs> Like the only thing that I probably, I, I, well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't race it, but I, I, I would love to test like a sprint car or, or one of those dirt oval cars. I don't know if I do a race. I think it's a, it's a bit like those things are a bit risky, um, which maybe that's just cause I'm not, I, 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 I've, 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 I've seen what's, what was it called? Um, world of outlaws at Eldora. I went there one year with some guys from lights. We all, we all went, it was pretty wild. It was, it, it was cool to see it be like, it'd be fun to drive one. I don't know if I'd race it though. A good, good one of experience and thinking, yeah, no, I'm happy where I am, actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, you've got, I noticed on the, uh, the Indie website, you've got an in- engineering physics degree. Has that come in any use whatsoever when it comes to uh, improving the racing? I think the, the, yeah, like, you know, for for me, like, to answer that question is kind of, you know, it's sometimes it's, it's hard to pick out, like, a distinct thing, like, but it's also just who I am, right? So it's it, 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 it's hard for me to separate, like, you know, who would I be without that background? I, I can't really say. Sure. So it, it really, you know, it really goes into my approach to a lot of stuff like that engineering problem solving methodology and like kind of being methodical and analytical. So I think in in, in, in that sense, it, it, it's helpful because I think that that approach, you know, is kind of how you have to be at, at any high level of a, of a technical sport like, like racing. And the, the thing is, if you talk to other drivers for, you know, it's like, you know, some guys are, you know, like your, your canons or whoever are more kind of seat of the pants guys. Right. But like a, 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 the, the lion's share of the, the drivers are all pretty technical and like switched on in terms of knowing like what's going on with, with the car and all that. Um, but with, with the indie car stuff, like, you know, and, and, and any top level of motorsport, you really have to give like specific feedback to your engineers um, you know, for us, the dampers are really the only open or one of the only open development kind of things that we're allowed to do on, on our own that is, uh, isn't really homologated. So, like, I think being able to, like, accurately like, kind of separate your feedback between you know, the engine and the suspension and, and, and whatnot, I, I feel like the technical background has kind of helped with that. Um, and I think maybe it gives me a bit problem. like to use, to use an F1 analogy, you've got the, the Prost and the centers kind of in the different approaches. Yeah. Maybe you'd yeah. I th- th- yeah. I think I'm more on the Prost side <laughs> for sure. Um, so I think that's, that's like somewhere where I would point to it being, being certainly useful. And then just the general appreciation for like the technical side of it and being able to like talk to the engineers kind of in their language, maybe speeds up the communication a bit. So it helps maybe make the team bonds a bit as well, a bit quicker if you're if you're jumping jumping into a new situation there because you're you're again you're speaking their language, so it helps it helps yeah. improve the dynamics a bit. Um, <laughs> away from racing, do you have a favorite film? Film? Hmm. Um, I've always been a Star Wars fan, so I like you know the the original trilogy. That we won't speak of the the, the 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 three new ones, but the. Uh, <laughs> The original films were 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 great and kind of on that sort of like sci-fi fantasy sort of genre. Like I also really like the uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. I don't know. It seems, seems to be a thing about trilogies, but <laughs> um, wrong with that. Yeah, I would say those are probably the the two that I would point to. Good choices. Good choices. Um, what's the last book you read? The last book I read. Actually, I'm almost finished. Um, it's called Handprints on Hubble. It's a not really an art. It's a story about, uh, it was written by Catherine Sullivan, an American astronaut at NASA. She was part of the, the team that flew up and deployed the Hubble Space Telescope uh, in like 80 something, I think it was 88, was it? Um, anyway, and basically the, like, it's sort of a story about her, her career in, in NASA, but it's also talks about how they, like the, the main kind of technical theme of the book is sort of how they design or they kind of went back and redesigned some of the telescope systems and then they're like then the astronauts procedures and then their tools to like make it a maintainable um device like on orbit so as like with the engineering background that, that, that was super interesting it's just just to see how, coming through the yeah <laughs> so that that's as you can tell definitely and i'm, I'm, I'm like a total space nerd so that, that that's like kind of right up my alley sounds sounds perfect and then finally, if your life story was retold in a TV show or a film, who would play you? You know, there's a British actor that people have sent me pictures of that apparently looks like me. I, I have no idea what his name is. 
but there, uh, I'm going to come up with this together. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I'll, I'll, if, 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 if I can find who it is, I'll, 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 I'll email it to you. I, I, I can't remember his name, but he, like, from a side view, he looks just like me. <laughs> so I'll, I'll put that in the final thing and we can I'll just <laughs> take a poll next to it and see. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. I uh, want to wish you good luck in Nashville, I think, is the next round for Bundy Car. And, uh, yeah. well, good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. Chat again soon. It was great catching up with Dalton and getting immersed in another form of motorsport for a change. I want to thank him again for coming onto the show and wish him the best of luck ahead of the next round of IndyCar and for the rest of the 2021 season. Join me again soon when I'll be chatting to another famous face from the world of motorsport. And in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and check out the other videos on the On The Curves YouTube channel. Away from YouTube, you can find me over on Drive Tribe and feel free to follow me on Instagram at t.albers.daily.drivetribe. You can also find me over on GP Grandstand TV, where I'm part of their weekly podcast. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you again soon.